kind of have these like a little training sessions to make sure we're like all up to speed. And basically after every single game, they were like always talking. They were always theory crafting. They were asking whether something was true. They were trying to think about what if I do this? And they were constantly innovating and trying new things. And so it's kind of scary to have two such high level players kind of be, be really, really easy training partners and not just like oh maybe like one time they'll drive over someone's house they just walk to each other's dorm and they're able to play like this very fortunate for both of them uh hugh mostly known for his charizard gonna be playing roy here today and making that cognitive decision to give you move if you is able to win pretty much entirely a roy bracket um gonna go hugh into what would be revolver who can play the winner of this set and you looking pretty good. Uh, Yumu generally takes pretty solid leads on people early on with his early game patience. Uh, pretty notable for that. And Yu just didn't approach him too much early. And when he did, he was able to hit a jab as Yumu tried to jump away. So it's only about 90%. Here we go. Yumu's classic edge guarding sequences. Hugh getting out of there, though. Not challenging it too hard. Able to jump the ledge. Able to survive this instance. And now Yumu's the one being like that. I, think I kinda liked as well like this like very very like tiny amount of patience for like those kind of like, tiny shifts coming out from Q. He did that especially against Valkyrie in his previous set on the stream and you could tell that it was like really kinda wearing on Valkyrie, especially after an early SD in their match. But it's those small little adjustments, that small little timings of when you throw out an aerial that just can really change the pace of a match. Here we go. Back to neutral, back to standing. You were gonna be able to strike with the back air. And that edge guard is gonna be pretty free. Hugh going up into the directional air dodge a little bit too early. Put himself out of a no man's land there. But a Jair immediately off of the spawn in game. Also, I'm not sure if this is true, at least from looking at some of the Smash data. I'm not sure if recently we I'm not sure at least from previous eight nights. But I think this might be the first offline set that these two have played. Uh, very likely, Q really doesn't have a lot of sets played in general in Chicagoland, uh, originally from New York. He also was dealing with some hand issues, uh, right around the time of the pandemic beginning, which is when he would have been competing here. So, yeah, you're gonna see Q fighting a lot of players for the first time. He also hasn't been, like, the really, like, the hungriest one to, like, com to, like, to, like, uh, compete out of everyone. And I feel like, especially with Iken, who is, like, really, really wants to compete and really wants to go to these events to see everyone, I think it's going to be really good and we're going to be seeing a lot more of this player in the future. Yeah, having Iken change to Iken and Hugh is a scary idea. Nice frame trap as well as he's able to get this back air and that down air will be finally taking that stock. Yeah, now that, that stock was a completely different way from the way the game began, right? So Hugh just could knock it off left. And Yumu would just hit him with a couple small things and then put him in a bad, awkward spot where Yumu had complete control of the stage. Um, same thing right here, where, you know, Yumu ran back to center stage, just said, okay, I'm gonna flood you away. I'm gonna maintain my ground spot here. I don't wanna let you be able to function anywhere within the realm of on stage. Because Yumu, I feel like his whole game plan is to don't ever put himself in the position where he's the one getting class crap. If he can just keep ledge trapping the opponent forever, he's gonna win the game. That's the logic behind the way he plays. Um, or at least that's the way it winds up looking. I don't know if that's what's going through his head. He just sees the game like in his in his advantage, and he's like, I, I it doesn't matter like if I potentially lose. All I know, all I care about is that I want to keep this advantage as much as possible. And down there as well, really gonna be making a statement that, you know. I, I am just gonna like absolutely dominate if I am below you. If I can just keep you juggled like that. It's a game so far, this tournament. Um, Iken taking it over, let's see, winner's round three. Yumu defeating Malgenvath, who I believe is a snake main. Also yep. played Zelda, I think. Hugh defeating Valkyrie, which I'm pretty sure was the 8-9 seeds in the tournament. Probably was a very good matchup to see. Um, Arctis defeating Leyron 2-1. Um, Iken over Vanson to get to fight Mabel, who defeated RZI. Ice Knight over Zamir and Peretta over Griffo Moneybank, which led to an Ice Knight Peretta matchup where Ice Knight won 2 to 1 in quarters. We also already saw Revolver and Arctis. Revolver won 2 to 1. And now we're awaiting game two of Yumu versus Uber to find out who is the third of four players to make it to the first season. Is Uber stacked stock confirmed today? Uh, 
I'm not able to get that, uh, not able to get that up, that up the uh, out of shield. Just a little bit of extra damage. That was a wild little Mario combo. I've never seen that before. Where you can tech chase with the floor there. That was something. The way that I always describe Yuma's Mario is that he does things that you never see before, but they always feel optimal in the weirdest ways. Like, you don't expect it, but when you like see it and then you like kind of picture the situation, you're like, oh yeah, wait, why didn't I think of that? Yuma catching a lot of huge landings with these down airs. That's the third stock in a row dating back to last game that he's been able to take with down air. Um, always off the top of the stage, never um, very high percentages either. Like 100% lines Mario down air. Yeah. Here we go again. Yuma with a pretty solid lead once again, but this is I mean, 124%. You can lose your stock at any time. And yeah, very good at getting off one of the that ledge trap situation into full advantage in his own right. Oh no, the jab! The jab is gonna be really putting him in an, off, in an awkward position. Sometimes you can take stocks with minimal button inputs. Don't need to mash. You go just pushing A once and walking away was enough. Sometimes you gotta let your opponents defeat themselves. You move. Gonna see if he can complete a three stock here as he gets you off of him so he can get back from ledge. All it takes is one Mario to go. Back roll. That's the cake, not gonna get it. But the Jair going? Yeah, it's gonna take a stock. Smash was not very big. At that percentage, that'll play from anywhere. You will immediately land him into a good 40% damage combo here. Nice DI out uh, though, coming out from Yumu, so he's not gonna get hit by the F smash unless it's stock at only 50%. I feel dirty even saying that that was a possibility that, you know, he could have died at that percent. Catch on the bear though. Not able to ca not able to carry off this edge guard though. You you really kind of did that to connect very very close. Now you just got him on the edge guard at 100. That's a scary. Thing. You rising with a nair that really worked out just to push him off of ledge and get him out of that precarious situation. Nice neck there once again. Nice aggressive fair actually gonna be pushing you move away from that fair attempt. His own. Open no, shield no. for a while. You were saying, all right, I'm out. I'm not, so, not going to play that game. Both these players so patient. Oh, that, that Mario dash attack. Really bad spot. Nice aggressive up air, though, trying to get you off that ledge. Anything you can do to get himself off the ledge is this. A player of Yumu's caliber is very important, as he will dash up F tilt. Very nice, very clean. Keeping himself in the game for the moment. Oh, oh my god, damage. F smash. Oh wow, four hit combo, 49%. Oh, oh he wanted it all. He wanted it all. Yeah, he he wants it all again. He gets it. That's it. Yeah, he will dash up after the down tilt. Yugo already showing his hand with rolling away on text. Hugh putting himself in the prime position to take the game with the F smash. And we will have I a mean, game three. Hugh with the monster comeback. Especially with that down tilt. I think that what was kind of running through Hugh's head was the fact that, you know, you can like, um, like Yumu can like um, do like a roll away or do some kind of tech situation. But especially when you have those down tilts so close together, he was kind of expecting the panic option. And he saw the panic option as the roll away. See, here we go again, right? Like, Hugh, just another player who is not even ranked in our state for, you know, he wasn't active here, obviously, over the summer. He was not in Chicago. But, you know, we're right back to square one, where you look at our 20-man our PR. Regardless of if you agree with the order, and some of the players are already playing way up to beyond the number that they were they had received this season. Look at all the players in this state that are clearly oh, no. of being ranked. And that is not going to be zero. Though. Clearly capable of being ranked. They know the game. They're very smart. They're patient. They're continuously improving. And there's probably like 10 to 12 of them past the 20. And you've got people advocating for like, all right, let's just rank 15 feet. I didn't look at the dude like you and think, okay, I, I want to fight this guy constantly. I seated him 19th yesterday at his mission, and he beats Ice Knight and he goes, man, don't forget how good I am. And I was like, all right, yeah. no, you're right, you're right. 
as he proceeds to get fifth place. Like, he's insane. Toad, another person who barely missed the PR, um, getting third yesterday, right? Like, I, so I, much talent in the city, it's ridiculous. I feel like there's a common joke about Chicago unranked, and you have to realize that, you know, just because, like, you're unranked does not mean that you're, like, that you're, like, not good or don't have the skill to kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these really high-level players. You can still be, like, on the very edge and be considered unranked. It's more so just kind of like a little bit of a trophy, but it's still, you still do have a range. You're still equally as good as a lot of these, as a lot of these other players. Well, you can compete, and that's what's important. Now, I'm not saying we should have like a 50 person number. Anybody who wants to reduce it from 20 to 15 just isn't paying attention to the wealth of talent we have from like the 6 to 40 range. Uh, you is kind of running away with this match right now. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, this has been pretty brutal. Yeah. Right. I, 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 if, if I, if I do not speak it, I do not see it. Is what I believe. Nice dab back there, though. Q gonna be finally taking this first stock. Can we see a stock like the end of game two to possibly keep it up? Yeah, he has been very consistent. Yeah. He is so, he is so consistent with it. And he actually told me that he does not actually do kind of like the uh, specific macro input to get the chair. He actually just like does the run up that tight. Now, oh, I, that's now it. I understand. The times that I'm able to hit that, I am also doing that. I don't do that at all. But the fact that he can do what he's doing is consistently. It's very oh, oh. Yeah, you're Mario on stage and you are dead. Mario Nair gonna take it. Still a good showing from you as he will manage a good comeback game, but Yumu just proving too strong, especially that third game with while we were talking about other things. Yumu kind of running away with it, going nuts.